Hello, my name is Yuri Maltsev, and originally I came from Russia, at that time Soviet Union. In the Soviet Union, I was raised um, in a place called Kazan, which is capital today of Republic of Tatarstan. But when I was 15, I was, I, my family moved to Moscow, and uh, I went to Moscow State University, and there I was introduced to free market ideas. Uh, when I was a third year student, a friend of mine gave me a road to serve them by great Austrian economist Friedrich August von Hayek, a Nobel Prize winning economist. Uh, at that time, uh, works by Hayek, as well as works by Solzhenitsyn or works by von Mises, uh, they were prohibited in the Soviet Union. Just for reading a book on economics, like Road to Serve Them, you could get seven years of jail in dreadful gulag concentration camp in the USSR. So I, uh, the book really changed my life. Uh, this book opened my eyes on inefficiency and cruelty of socialism, that socialism is doomed to fail anywhere uh, it is practiced. Uh, I became an economist, and then I worked, uh, the, uh, the last years, I worked as one of economic advisors to Soviet government working on economic reforms of perestroika. I wasn't the advisor. I wouldn't take the blame for what happened because the country of 11 time zones collapsed because of inefficiencies of socialism. In 1989, I um, lost all hope about perestroika and I moved to the United States. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, start working for another uh, great bureaucracy of this planet for the federal government in Washington, D.C., in a congressional think tank, United States Institute of Peace, which, like most congressional think tanks, didn't think much. Well, uh, in the West, uh, my mission, I think, is to warn people about the dangers of socialism, uh, about the murderous nature of this system. Not many people in the West do realize that in socialist countries, 220 million people were murdered by their own governments for the sake to, of proving that socialism is right. In Soviet Union alone, anywhere from 43 to 61 million people were killed. For me, it doesn't even relevant. It's not relevant whether it's 43 or 61. It's horrendous number. It's beyond human understanding. Stalin himself used to say, death of one person is a tragedy. Death of a million is just statistic. Why socialism kills? Because socialism does not have any incentives for people to do anything. To make people work for themselves, socialist leaders, uh, they would resort to mass murder. Uh, well, what Mr. Gorbachev did, and should be credited for, uh, that he removed fear out of the system, which was glued together only by fear. And sure enough, the system collapsed like a house of cards. The country, which could be the richest country in the world, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, it's 11 time zones, six, one six of the world surface, has all possible and impossible natural resources. It is as rich in natural resources as South Africa, but it also has more oil than Saudi Arabia, more natural gas than any other country in the world, and the country is poor. Even Russian President Putin, he admitted that Russians are very poor people living in a very rich country. So we can see that it's not natural resources which are the source of wealth. And we should understand it in the United States, in South Africa, in Russia, everywhere, that the only source of wealth and prosperity is freedom. Personal liberty, human freedom, economic freedom, that made some countries rich and prosperous and some countries poor and backward. In Africa, I think that we have good examples of good governance and property rights, uh, and that would be countries like Mauritius and Botswana. 
Uh, so Botswana is quite close to South Africa. You can just look over the fence and see how things should be done. I think in South Africa today we have problems, uh, serious problems with a big government. I think we should be very much aware that socialism never worked anywhere on this planet. That communist China became a decent place only when they repudiated the basics of Marxist doctrine and permitted people some economic freedom. The more economic freedom, usually the more prosperity, the more human rights are observed, uh, the happier are people. The, there is even very strong correlation between longevity and freedom. So that's what I think we should keep in mind. The lesson from the Soviet Union and other socialist countries is that when they get rid of socialist system, they began to develop, develop pretty fast. Some of them are star performers. If you will look at former communist countries, former Soviet countries like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, like Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, they already achieved a pretty high standard of living. Russia and Ukraine are lagging behind because they still have big government, a lot of regulations. Uh, still a large sector of the economy is owned by the government. Government ownership is the worst thing. Government cannot manage property well. Uh, there was a um, Soviet joke that what would happen if there will be a socialism in Sahara? Well, the answer would be that in 10 years nothing would happen, but then there will be no sand anymore. So this, I think the lessons are pretty, are pretty clear, that only economic freedom, um, only human rights, civil rights for people, uh, that is the, the basis for economic prosperity. And I would like to wish um, to wish um, uh, my friends in South Africa, all South Africans, freedom and prosperity. And I think that Free Market Foundation is doing a great work in promoting ideas of liberty, ideas of, of personal freedom uh, in this great country. South Africa has fantastic potential, fantastic potential for its people, of its beauty, of its nature, of its natural resources. And I think combined with freedom, combined with, uh, with creativity of its people, uh, it has a very bright future.